The concept behind additive synthesis is combining multiple simple um, sine waves into a more complex timbre. So what we're going to do is take a simple sine wave, cycle object. Uh, we'll be giving it a frequency. Uh, we're going to create an ADSR envelope with the function object. Make this a little smaller for now. Um, <clears throat> line tilde. Out of the second outlet of function, left outlet of line into this multiplication. Um, and all we're doing here is creating an ADSR envelope. So when we draw a function in here, uh, it'll go from 0, if you see the y value up here, uh, 0 up to about 1. Make this bigger so we can see it. Then down, and then back to 0. It'll do that over the course of whatever the uh, x value is. We can set that by giving this a set domain message. Let's make that two seconds long for now. Um, locking your patch, clicking on the set domain, now the x value here is 0, the x value here is 2000. So over the course of two seconds, the line object will ramp from this value up and then down. In order for this to happen, we have to send it a bang. Um, easy DAC to hear what's going on. Let's give this a frequency of A. Uh, an octave higher. Excellent. We're getting a little bit of distortion. I'll just put a master gain control right here. And we have a simple sine wave uh, and a nice clean uh, amplitude envelope. Of course, this can be uh, any shape that you want. I would really strongly encourage you to play around with this, really get to know what's going on here. Uh, we can, of course, give the set domain a variable. Um, and then instead of having a fixed time, we can change that. Uh, you know, the usual stuff. You can always customize it as much as, as much as you like. Now, the beauty of additive synth is we're going to have one master control <clears throat> to control the frequency and one trigger to trigger the notes. But we're going to have multiple components uh, within our note. Uh, a single note can usually be broken down according to the fast Fourier transform, um, can usually be broken down into multiple overtones uh, or multiple sine waves. Okay, so the really complex tone can be divided and understood as a combination of simple sine waves, and that's it. Really easy. So additive synth takes uh, advantage of this concept, uh, and what we're doing is now combining multiple oscillators. Let's create a few more just to keep things interesting. Um, we're going to have multiple oscillators uh, that will combine to create one tone. So I'm going to attach all of these to the gain, master gain. Um, and the premise on each of these is the exact same. We're going to have one frequency control. Let's actually give them all the same domain uh, so that all of our overtones um, have the same duration. Give that a thousand, and we're going to trigger them all with the same trigger. Now, you can see how this can quickly become uh, an extremely complicated patch. So, right now we haven't done anything too complex. I'm just going to arrange the patch chords uh, so it's a little bit cleaner. Save the patch. Additive uh, synth. Um, now, the key though. We have one frequency going into here. We don't want to just have the same frequency going into every cycle object. You're going to have whatever, eight or seven notes of uh, just unison. What we want is some way that this master fundamental frequency is going to control all of these overtones. Uh, if you've studied acoustics, you know that the first partial or the fundamental um, is usually the fundamental frequency. Partial two in a harmonic overtone series is two times the fundamental frequency, partial three is three times the fundamental, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, this is a harmonic overtone series. Uh, in other words, most orchestral instruments 
uh, that have a clear audible pitch have a harmonic overtone series. Uh, violin, clarinet, everything really has a fundamental, which is the pitch that we hear, and then the timbre of that instrument is determined by the relative amplitudes, the changes of amplitude um, of all of the partials, of all the overtones. So let's try to mimic this simple uh, overtone series. What we're going to do is take the fundamental frequency, multiply it by 2 times 2. Um, I'm adding a float here so that later if we want to make an inharmonic overtone series, uh, we can add a float into the right outlet and multiply it by something else. Okay, but for now we're just going to multiply this by 2 um, and attach it to this oscillator. You guessed it, we're going to multiply the next one by 3, by 4, by 5, by 6, and by 7. 3, 4, <clears throat> 5, 6. Oh, we missed our 3. things organized. Three, four, five, six, and seven. We gotta connect all these. Uh, you can see how additive synth can become quickly really uh, cumbersome. Okay, but imagine back in the day with hardware, each of these was a different piece of hardware. Every oscillator was like a little module on your wall. Um, now we can have as many of these as we want in Macs and you know, you can have an additive synth with like 300 oscillators if you want uh, and have really, really dynamic, complex sounds. Um, so an important thing to take into consideration here is that this number is going into the left inlet of these multiplication objects and they're being multiplied by the argument, which is currently 2. In order to trigger these and actually have it output a number, you need to change or send this information f uh, into the left inlet. Uh, in other words, this is a hot inlet and this is a cold inlet, okay? So the hot one will trigger operation and the cold one will not do anything. In other words, if we have 440 here and I send this a 440, it'll output an 880. But if I were to change the right value and add make this a 3, it won't output anything. All it's doing is replacing this 2 with a 3, and then it's waiting for this number to be sent to the left inlet. The left inlet has to be um, uh, triggered, essentially. You have to send something in here for this operation uh, to pass through. Um, small detail, but pretty important. Anyway, we'll keep this at 2, and just hear our clean overtone series. Uh, and all of a sudden you have what sounds kind of like a triangle wave or something. Um, so let's look at a spectroscope and see really what's going on here. Um, I'll attach it to the gain object. You see all the overtones right here. and They're all the same volume. Right. So usually what happens is these things get progressively quieter as you go up the overtone series. Uh, you can press shift and click to delete some of these little points. Um, but if you wanted uh, something that was a little bit more akin to an acoustic instrument, you'd want some of the higher overtones to be quieter and to die out a little bit more quickly. Okay. Oh yeah, we got a really loud one over here. A little more dynamic. It's interesting. Um, let's create a preset object just to control uh, our domain, duration, and all of the envelopes. That way we don't have to keep clicking through these if we find some sounds that we like. Shift and click to save. Uh, helps us keep a keep track of of our progress. Uh, let's clean this up again. Uh, route patch chords. It always takes a minute. 
Um, great. So, nice simple. No, that's too low, obviously. I like that you can hear this high one decaying a little bit slower than the rest. Let's give these uh, a little sort of uh, resonance at the end. Ah, oh, that's nice. That's really nice. So this almost sounds like another little attack because it goes up quickly. Uh, we'll save that as a second preset. Um, now, the fun thing, this sounds fine. It sounds like a nice 80s, uh, 70s even synthesizer. Um, but where things get really interesting is when you start dealing with inharmonic uh, overtones. So instead of multiplying by two, let's multiply by slightly more uh, irregular intervals. Uh, 4.5, 5.2, it doesn't really matter, I'm just making these up right now. Um, now we're going to get a much richer, nothing yet, because we have to trigger the operation. So you get a much richer sound. Let's hear that, that's slightly longer. Uh, you can also have, of course, different just sort of uh, evolutions of the overtones over a longer period of time. We'll save this one. Uh, let's make this slightly longer. Hundred hertz. Let's try two hundred. With really really basic additive synth patch, only manipulating the amplitude envelopes, the durations, uh, and the multiplier with which we're multiplying our overtones, we can get a crazy amount of of uh, really beautiful sounds. In fact, I would encourage you to maybe also include these in the preset object. Yeah. That way you don't have to, when you have so many different variables you're dealing with, um, you don't have to um, <clears throat> switch every component by hand. Um, so these were originally our, yeah, these were originally our um, harmonic overtone series. I'll save this again, uh, you know, and then you can go around customizing everything you want. Um, Ultimately, what you can do is also attach this to your MIDI keyboard. Note in, MIDI to frequency. That will be converted into this fundamental frequency with whatever rich overtones you want. Uh, and we want that to actually first change the frequency. Um, and then trigger the amplitude envelope. Okay, so remember the order of operations, uh, order message order video that we um, that I posted on Canvas. The order of messages in Max goes from right to left. So what's going to happen is it'll send out this float, whatever float it receives in here, and it will set the frequency, and then it'll send out a bang uh, and trigger these notes. Okay, let's do this with a K slider for now, just to emulate. I don't have my MIDI keyboard hooked up. Let's make something a little more interesting. 3.4. Uh, and we'll save this. It's really cool. You know, that sounds uh, just like Stockhausen, uh, Gesang de Junglinga, or something like that. <clears throat> anyway. Um, Play around with this. Obviously, you can incorporate all sorts of uh, little customizations. Uh, really get to know the the uh, the logic behind what's going on here. Dig in, repeat this as many times as you like. I won't upload the patch because I'd like for you to build it yourselves. Um, but uh, eventually, you'll hook this up to a MIDI keyboard. You can have your uh, pitch bend wheel controlling, for example, the uh, the uh, amount of distortion in the harmonic series. You know, that could be really interesting. You could also have another slider on your MIDI keyboard controlling the, the duration here. Later we'll look at ways to um, actually sustain the note by holding it down 
on your MIDI keyboard, uh, having a slightly more dynamic control over what happens. Um, anyway, enjoy. <laughs>